Welcome back to the I Don't Want a Divorce podcast. Today, I continue talking about what to do when you leave your abuser. This, of course, is all based on my book, Enough is Enough, on sale from Moody Publishers. Remember also that my brand new book, 20 Lies That Keep You With Your Abuser, is available now on my website, davideclarkphd.com. That's Clark with a knee. We are having a huge response to this book. I did a Janet Parshall show recently, in fact, just last week. Big response, many books sold, many phone advice sessions from ladies that are caught in codependency and and feel like they they can't ever leave uh, their abusers because they're believing these 20 lies. In fact, more than one of these lies is usually involved in the codependent's head. And the church often promotes these lies. So this is a chance to get at your codependency and shred it, which will then prepare you for the Enough is Enough plan and book so you can actually get out, all right? So Dr. Clark gets to sell two books. That really isn't the point, but that's true. But often we need the, the precept of the 20 Lies book. Available now on the website, and, and the books have come in early, so they're, uh, they're available. And through June 30, you get $5 off this 20 Lies book. That, that's a good deal. Okay. In fact, let me read, I'm gonna read the back cover copy of this 20 Lies book to give you a flavor about what we're gonna do in the book. How to shred the lies that keep you stuck with your abuser. My definition of Christian codependency, and I cover that clearly in the book, why abuse victims believe the lies, many reasons why they do, the fears underneath the lies, there's a fear underneath each lie, what the Bible says about the lies, of course, critically important, what my experience, 35 years, says about the lies, and then small action steps that destroy the lies. Each chapter, each, each chapter that has a lie in it, there'll be a small step you can take. Not a big step, but small steps that add up over time to defeating your codependency. And then I end with, with God's help and God's truth, which is how I always want to operate. I will get you healthier, stronger, and ready to be free. I mean, God does that, but he can use this book to do it. Okay. Today's topic, more on when you leave. So when you leave, communicate through your attorney and your support team. For at least that first month of of no contact, communicate with your spouse only through others. There'll be contact, but not from you, only through others. As indicated previously, your attorney will send him the proper legal papers. Have one of your support team members contact him with this message. She is done with you. Respect her privacy. All she wants is to work out a schedule for when you will see the kids. We want him to know you're done. You're not kidding. You don't want him. The right man, in fact, won't accept that and will change, but we don't want to let him know there's any chance for him. We put him into a corner. With your attorney, you will develop a schedule for his time with the children. This has to happen right away. You'll already have it in place before you leave, frankly. And then you'll let him know immediately through someone else. The schedule is fair and reasonable for him in order to protect your custody rights. He'll use anything against you. Your attorney or another team member will send him this proposed schedule. Maybe some negotiation, but again, it's going to be fair and reasonable. Most states now, it's 50-50. So you may, unless you have a very small child, you may have to do 50-50. The time with the children agreement will depend on a number of factors, including your husband's work and travel schedule. It must follow the guidelines of your state, whatever those are. Your attorney obviously will know that. Many states and courts mandate 50-50, like I said, so this may be what you propose. Don't hold the kids back from him unless he's been violent. This will bite you in court and you don't need that. Having said that, if you've got uh, teenagers that really want nothing to do with him, you're not going to force them to see him. All right, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna not prevent it, but you're not going to force it. Your attorney and your designated support team member will work out this agreement regarding the children's time with your abuser. You're not going to be involved in it. They are. Okay, your abuser's reaction Your abuser's reaction to your departure will be very revealing. It will reveal his character and his feelings for you. The classic and most common reaction is shock and a tearful emotional attempt to get you to come right back. He'll act confused. He'll even say he's sorry. He's not really sorry. He'll get a bunch of church leaders, friends, family members, and neighbors to contact you on his behalf. Ignore them all. They have no clue what's going on. You don't have the time or energy to tell all these people your story. Now, I'm telling you, when a man loses his woman, that's when you find out if he truly loves you and loves the Lord and loves your children. 
The right man will move heaven and earth to get you back. He, I don't care if he's a narcissist or not. He'll spend eight months to a year fixing himself and owning all the blame. The wrong man, of course, will do nothing like that. He'll character assassinate, blame you, you know, rip you to pieces, file divorce on you. It'll be a nightmare confirming you've done the right thing. Now, when you don't respond to him and he realizes you're not coming back, he'll move into full-blown attack mode. He'll engage in all the nasty, abusive behaviors that, that um, I, I mentioned in the Enough is Enough book. He will be all over you, just nasty and vicious. Vicious attacks, character assassinations, lies about you. He'll say, you're crazy, you're abusive, you're having an affair, which is ridiculous, you're bipolar, you're a terrible Christian, you're hurting the kids, on and on. And he'll be huge on, I, I had no idea even though you told him a million times about his abuse, I had no idea she was going to leave. And he'll play the victim beautifully. I, I came home to an empty home. Yeah, that's what you deserve, dirtball. But that's not his going to be his response. And many in the Christian community, even family and friends will side with him because they don't know what's going on. That's why part of my preparation is letting them know what's going on. You and the kids leaving him will humiliate him. Frankly, it's what he deserves. It will make him look bad, and for him, image is everything. To repair his image and punish you, he'll go after you with a vengeance. He is going to make you suffer for what you did to him. He'll mount a massive public relations campaign to discredit you and destroy your reputation. He'll claim that you are the abusive one, and your sudden escape proves that. He'll say to anyone who will listen that you have abused him for years. Absolute lie, opposite of what the truth is. He'll accuse you of doing all the things he did to precipitate your leaving him and of which you are accusing him. He will play the poor, traumatized victim and he'll win an Oscar for his performance. How could you leave without warning? This was so terribly hard on me and so undeserved. Of course, he won't mention all the abuse he's put you through for years, decades in most cases. He won't mention the million times you told him what you needed. The million times you cried yourself to sleep because he was abusing you. He won't mention the years of abuse he has inflicted on you. Oh, no, no mention of that. He's a master liar. You know that. So he'll be successful and win the public relations battle with many people. So be it. Expect and accept this. You know the truth. Your support team knows the truth. And God certainly knows the truth. Though you do not need it, his vicious reaction simply confirms once again that you've done the right thing by leaving him. A man who loves God and loves you and the kids would own 100% of the blame and win you back. The wrong man will do just the opposite. I want to encourage you and let you know you aren't alone in this situation. Other spouses have been where you are and they've successfully escaped from their abuser using my plan. Hear what a few of these spouses have to say. This is actual words from abusers, abusive, abused spouses I work with. Leaving my abuser was the hardest thing I've ever done. Right up to the day I left, I agonized over whether it was the right thing to do. See, that's normal to agonize. The peace and joy I feel now is God's confirmation that leaving was the right thing to do. The relief and peace you're going to feel will amaze you. I'm just telling you. From the day, I, here's another one. From the day I left him, my abuser went into attack mode. He smeared my character to anyone who would listen. He even got some of my own family members to turn on me. That's how good these people are. He doesn't realize that these hateful actions have further convinced me that I had to leave him. Exactly. He wants to make you suffer and bring you back? Uh-uh. That's not going to work. And frankly, some of your family will be stupid enough to believe him. your abuser. Cut them off. I don't care if you're related to them. Who needs them? Here's another lady. He moaned and cried and begged for 10 days after I left. When that didn't work, he filed divorce papers and threatened to ruin me financially. He threatened to take my kids from me. Thank God I had my job, my own bank account, and my attorney. See, the fake repentance doesn't last long. He'll turn on you like a snake. That's why you wait a month to see if it's, if it's maybe real. Another one. This, this is a man now that lived with an abusive wife. I have to admit, I never thought I would have the guts or the ability to leave my wife, he says. Despite her constant verbal abuse and physical violence and affairs, what a winner, I figured I had to stay with her and take it. The church told me I had to stay and take it. When I realized the damage she was doing to our kids, I knew I had to get out. Since we left, she's no different. She's already shacked up with her next victim. I'll bet she has. But the kids and I are different. And in a very good way, we're happy and safe for the first time in 15 years. If I can get out, 
anyone can get out. So you see, sometimes the wife is the abuser. 20, 25% of the cases I have, the wife is the abuser. So even if your abuser maintains a repentant, apologetic, and humble stance for that first month, take it with a grain of salt, actually a half grain of salt. Do not respond even if he has a good reaction. He has a long way to go if he wants you back and you're going to give him what he has to do. That's the next podcast. He has a ton of work to do on himself, a ton. And there's a 95% chance he's not going to do the work. If you're benefiting from these podcasts and want to help us help others in marital crisis, subscribe to this podcast, leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts. And next week's podcast topic is how your abuser can win you back. We're going to give him a bona fide shot. We'll talk about that in the next podcast.